Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I design my crochet wall hanging patterns. Um, I will, I'm going to be going over how I start the design, graph the design, and make the chart for the design and give you a little bit of, of an idea of how I type up the pattern and format it. So if this is something you are interested in and want to know more about then please keep watching. Okay, so first off, before we do anything, um, every single design that I have um, starts with a general idea or theme. Um, for this wall hanging and for the previous, I can't even remember how many wall hangings, uh, my theme has been plants. I've been obsessed with plants. I want plants of my own. I'm going to be a plant mom, but I am horrible at keeping plants alive, so making fake plants <laughs> through my crochet patterns is going to have to do for now. Um, but how I get my inspiration is from a lot of different places. Um, I love Pinterest. Pinterest is such a beautiful thing when it comes to inspiration. Um, I fo follow so many plant Instagrams, um, lifestyle bloggers, um, and anything that I can think of. Um, I love following, um, polymer clay earring makers. They have such beautiful ideas when it comes to their earrings and I'm so inspired by them. Um, and I also uh, keep a whiteboard next to my bed, so if I got like an incredible idea in the middle of the night when I was sleeping, I always will get up and write on the whiteboard what my idea was. Um, it has helped me so much because I have gotten so many ideas in the middle of the night when I first started designing wall hangings and I completely forgot them. And it was so annoying, so I definitely made it a point to get that whiteboard in my bedroom. And it doesn't even have to be in the middle of the night, you know, whenever you come across something like on Instagram or Facebook or wherever and you like the idea, it's always great to just jot it down somewhere and have like a designated area to kind of jot down your ideas, whether it be a whiteboard, a notebook, or, you know, whichever works best for you. Um... And then once I have brainstormed an idea, then I will start to graph everything out. This is where the designing process starts for me. Um, every single one of my patterns begins on graph paper. Um, so I'll go ahead and center this for you. Yeah, so a bit, when I first started designing wall hangings, everything I did started on graph paper. Um, I've always been a very visual person. Um, technology is wonderful and amazing, but I always liked, you know, the feel of paper and being able to go back and change things as I pleased. Um, so what I do is I take just four sheets of graph paper and I tape them together and it's usually pretty big. And then I'll start with an idea uh, kind of around the bottom center and kind of work my way out. And then after I'm done, I will trim, um, the excess, um, paper that I don't need, you know, cause a lot of not math, but a lot of like thought goes into like how wide you want your wall hanging, how tall. So you kind of have to work with that. Um, once you just start, start to design more wall hangings, you kind of have a good gauge of how, you know, wide and how tall, how many squares on the graph paper will um, produce. So that just comes with time um, once you start to design more wall hangings or uh, patterns in general. But I did want to show you um, the graph paper that I used. Um, I just have this quad spiral notebook. Um, I prefer the five squares per inch because the uh, squares are really small and they're really close together and it mimics um, as close to a stitch, like a single crochet stitch as you can. Um, anything bigger than this, I find it to be a little bit difficult because it's hard to gauge um, how big everything is going to be and how the stitches are going to look together. So um, I just prefer the five squares per inch. Um, I think I bought this on Amazon in a pack of three. So if I can find the link, I will definitely share that for you. All right, and then once I have graphed out the design, I'm happy with it, then I will start to crochet the design and I'll write the pattern as I go. Um, so as you can see, I have marked all of my rows with stars and I have numbered each one of my rows and that is how I work up the pattern. Um, just a brief explanation on how you read charts um, for those of you who are not familiar with it. Um, the way you read a crochet chart is relatively, um, when you're working in the rows, 
odd rows or when you start are going to be worked from the right to the left just as you normally would and then even rows you're going to work from right or left to right so you're just literally going to follow the pattern as you would crocheting um and then it, this will just be flip-flopped if you're left-handed um so yeah i work up the pattern um i write it down as i go um, I actually type it up now. Um, I find that typing up the pattern as I go uh, rather than writing it down definitely helps to um, avoid any mistakes in the pattern. Um, it's just kind of a foolproof way to make sure that when you type the, the pattern to begin with that is going to be correct and all you have to do is copy and paste it into um, you know a Word document or a template or whichever you know um, a system you plan on using for typing or writing your patterns up. Um, so yeah, well, I'll go through, I'll type up the pattern as I go. If I need to make changes, um, I'll go ahead and erase it. That's why I like graph paper so much because what, if, sometimes when you work up a pattern, um, things will not translate as well um, to crochet as it does in a graph. Um, so sometimes you'll need to go back and kind of make alterations and little changes just to make sure that, you know, it's translating well between, you know, the two things. Um, so again, I'll keep working at the pattern as I go. Um, and during this time, I, I also take progress pictures. Um, I have found that um, the people who buy my patterns really enjoy having some kind of progress picture. Um, I usually take one that's halfway through um, just to make sure they're on the right track and everything looks the way that it should. So definitely keep that in mind while working up the pattern to um, take progress pictures as you go. And then I will just keep working up the pattern until it's finished. I fasten everything off. Um, I don't attach the fringe. I don't attach it to a wooden dowel or a branch or anything. I will just leave it as it is and then take that final picture um, just to make sure that, you know, everybody is on the right track and they have a good visual of what the piece is supposed to look like. So once the, um, the pattern is generally finished, um, I will go ahead and start taking the progress pictures for um, the fringe and the wooden dowel. So I'll just take some um, progress pictures on how I attach the fringe and how I hang the piece onto the wooden branch. Um, this is completely optional. Um, I give all, all um, makers the choice um, of how they like to, you know, attach the piece to the dowel or the tree branch. Some people like to single crochet it on. Some people like to slip stitch it on. Some people like to weave it on, uh, such as myself. So I just show people how I personally like to attach it and then always give them the option and different ideas of how to attach it. Um, and once that's all done, then I will take the final photos. Um, this is the time where you really get to showcase the piece. So you definitely want to try to, you know, put all your photo skills into good use. I am not a great photographer uh, whatsoever. I take all of my pictures on my phone. Um, it's just the best way for me to take them because I edit everything on my phone. Um, I use an app called Snapseed. It is so user-friendly, so beginner-friendly. I've used it for years. Um, and it's just the best way for me to edit the photos. So um, my best advice for taking progress pictures is using natural light for sure. Um, and then just, you know, making the necessary edits either on your phone, on your computer, if you are um, well-versed in Photoshop, you know, you definitely don't want to over um, edit your pictures because you definitely want it to be realistic. You don't want someone to purchase your pattern and then be upset because their pattern or what they worked up looks nothing like yours. You know, you definitely want to show some flaws so they know that you're not perfect. You know, this is normal. This is how it's supposed to look. Um, and it just gives them a way better feeling of comfort and confidence knowing that they did a wonderful job because they, everybody does. You know, everybody has different levels of crochet. Um, uh, I'm, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I guess crochet skills 
Um, and you definitely don't want someone to feel, you know, discouraged if their work does not look like yours. You know, you definitely want to encourage people to, you know, just keep working on their craft, keep working on their techniques, and just remind them that everybody starts you know, somewhere, and just because your pattern doesn't look exactly like mine does not mean you did it wrong. Okay, and then once um, I have taken all the pictures, I've written the pattern down, um, or typed it up, or whichever one you choose to do, all my progress pictures are taken, then it is time to type out the pattern and start inputting it into a pattern format. Um, I used to put all of my patterns on in a PowerPoint presentation. I did that actually for a couple of years, but due to some feedback, um, I have found that it is just really not user friendly and it certainly is not printer friendly. Um, so I have since decided to go with a word template. Um, I actually purchased one from DeBross. Um, on Instagram. If you are not familiar with her work, I will go ahead and link her website down below. Um, the template is $12. It is completely customizable, completely free to customize through Canva. If you're familiar with Canva, um, you do not need a membership. It is fantastic. I customized the absolute crap out of it and made it completely my own. And it has been a lifesaver. I've gotten some great feedback. And uh, before we press forward, I do want to mention um, definitely when you first start designing, whether it be wall hangings or hat scarves, you know, other home decor items, definitely listen to other makers and the people who are purchasing your patterns um, because their feedback is going to only feed into your success. Um, because these are the people who are purchasing your patterns and their opinion is going to mean the most. Um, so I've gotten some wonderful feedback and constructive criticism over the years. Nobody's been mean or nasty. They generally want you to do well and they just give you like little tips on how it could be more readable, more printer friendly. Like I said, when I used to use PowerPoint and I'll use Word, people have been so much happier. It's so much easier to read and print out. So that's definitely something to consider um, is definitely listening to, you know, Constructive criticism, it might sting a little. Um, people usually won't reach out and say, oh my God, I hate your pattern, or you know, whatever the case may be, because they're, people like that are just being nasty. It's the people who are generally reaching out and being like, hey, I think if you formatted it this way, you know, it'd be a lot easier to read, and people would, you know, appreciate it more. So yeah, with that being said, um, the very last thing that I do um, after the pattern's written up, after it's been exported into a PDF, is I make a charts for every single one of my wall hangings. Um, this is something that I've done from the beginning, um, and I thought it would be a great way for makers to kind of track their progress. Um, a lot of crocheters are very visual. They like to see and make sure that when they're following a pattern that they're doing it right. They don't want to have to guess if they're doing it right. Um, so for every single one of my wall hangings, I create a chart just like this one. It is literally just a colored um, version of the one that I draw up for all of my wall hangings into a digital form. And the program that I use to create all of my charts is called Stitch Fiddle. Um, Stitch Fiddle is such a wonderful program. It is great for knitters, crocheters, cross stitchers. You can make corner to corner patterns, black and white patterns, colored patterns, everything that you can think of you can make with this program. You can input images and it'll help you create charts through that. Um, I personally haven't done that. Um, but I think it'd be great if you were to want to do like a pictogram and do like a portrait of someone. That would be definitely a great um option to have. Um, Stitch Fiddle is completely 100% free. Um, the only downside with the free version, because there is a membership you can pay for, is you are limited to, I think, 15 charts. Um, I personally pay for the membership because I make tons of charts. I've actually had to erase a bunch, which is not a big deal because they've all been exported into PDF form and I have them all saved. But so for right now, I have about 17 charts. Um, but I like to keep them there because I like to go back and like reference the charts for future patterns. Um, 
So yeah, it's a great system to use, um, especially when um, designing wall hangings or any kind of project where you're trying to translate an image into crochet form. Um, you can use it for pillows, ta obviously tapestry wall hangings, um, coasters, you know, anything that you want to make an image of, you know, this system is going to be great. Um, and this is actually the number one question I get asked in my DMs and my comments on YouTube even, um, is how I create these charts. Um, so because of that, I want to go ahead and for this last part of the video, do a super quick tutorial on how to use Stitch Fiddle. Um, for those of you who may have never heard of it before or who aren't um, familiar with charts or creating charts on um, the computer. So that is going to be the last part of the tutorial uh, for this video. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen with you and I will be right back. Okay, so this is the home screen for Stitch Fiddle. Um, to access Stitch Fiddle, all you have to do is go to stitchfiddle.com or you can um, Google Stitch Fiddle and it should be the first uh, link that comes up. And all you have to do is um, come to the home screen um, and create a free profile. And this is where you're gonna be able to save all of your charts. Um, like I said, it's completely free. Um, the only downside is there are a little few less perks with the free version. Um, for one, you are only able to have 15 charts, I believe. So if you are plan on, planning on creating more than 15 charts, um, you do have to pay for the membership, which I, like I said, I believe it's $5. So it's really not that expensive. Um, it's pretty affordable and it's definitely worth it if you plan on making um, more than 15 charts but these are the charts that I have um, in my profile right now a lot of these are really really old and I could probably um, delete some of them because um, like I said I save all of them um, in PDF files so I never lose them I back up everything so I really don't need to keep all of these but sometimes I like to keep them just to go back for a reference for future patterns if I need any kind of inspiration um, this is actually the chart that I made, um, for the pattern that I was referencing in this video, the, um, mini ferns in the valley pattern. So this is the chart that I made, um, just to give you a, um, look into what a finished chart looks like. But let me go ahead and go back to the home page, kind of give you a little tour. Um, everything's pretty self-explanatory over here. You have shared charts, charts without folder, deleted charts. You are still able to access deleted charts. Um, I think the only thing you can't do is edit them, but you can still look at them and reference them if you ever need to go back and take a look, like I said, for inspiration or to look at, um, column counts or row counts, anything like that. And down here, you can create a new chart. You can search your charts. Um, you can update your profile if you need to, so if you need to change your email address or if you want to go ahead and pay for the paid membership, you can do that there, or you can do it up here also. You just click on there, go to my profile. You can access your charts from here also if you find your way away from this page. Um, this is just an, um, an extension of the um, options here. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's super self-explanatory. The paid version and the free version are completely the same. Like I said, it, it, the only difference is, is you can add more than 15 charts and then there's different um, exporting and save options for the paid version than there is in the free version. But I actually have to make a chart now for a new pattern that I have coming up. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through a little bit how I create a, just a new chart in general. Um, so all I'm going to do is go to create new chart, click on that, and then all you have to do is choose your craft. So you don't have to use this for just crochet. You can use it for knitting, cross stitch, crochet, but because I'm making a crochet pattern, I'm going to go ahead and select crochet. And then here you have a bunch of different options. So if you want to do a corner to corner, so if you want to do a corner to corner while hanging a blanket, um, you can choose that, crochet with colors, so it gives you the option of 
um, adding different colors to your chart, Tunisian crochet, free form, fillet crochet. So there's so many different options for you to use. Um, but because we are working with colors for this particular chart, um, and this is the option that I use every single time I make charts. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And then you have the option of creating your own empty chart or your own design, which is what I do for every single one of my wall hangings. Um, and like I said, you are able to import pictures and create charts from pictures. If you wanna make a pictogram or do some sort of portrait. Um, I have not experimented with this just yet. Um, I typically just uh, use an empty chart. Um, and the QR code, I actually have no idea what that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that one. Um, but yeah, you can either import your own picture or you can go ahead and create an empty chart. So that is what I'm gonna do here. And then this is where you're gonna import um, how many rows your pattern has and how many columns it has. Um, and for the chart that I need to make now, I have 50 columns. So 50 stitches across and the rows are 59. So this is this pattern is going to be 59 rows in length and all I have to do is create the chart and there you go. Um, to make it a little bit easier to make, I always um, shrink the chart so I am able to see just the width of it. I don't do the width and the height because it makes the chart too small and it's a little harder to work with. Um, so all you have to do to change the view of the chart is go over to view and then fit width or fit the height, you know, whichever one you prefer. Um, I always choose fit width because it's just easier to work up. But I always work from the bottom up. So I will scroll down to the bottom. But as you can see, um, the chart that I've created is 50 stitches uh, in width and then 59 rows high, which is super nice. And also another cool, um, this is actually an update. that They didn't have this when I first started using the program, but up here, um, it tells you um, at what, at what column and what row you're on, which is so nice because once you start going up, you cannot see uh, the column numbers down at the bottom. So this is such a nice um, addition to have. Like I said, it didn't have that when I first started using the program. Um, but to get started with the pattern, um, I have to choose my colors. Um, these are the primary colors that the chart comes with. It's just your standard default colors. Um, to add your own colors, all you have to do is go to the plus one button here, and then you are able to choose whatever colors that you need. Um, the first color that I need is a honey color. So uh, what I do is I choose um, the color that's closest to the color that I need, and I select that. And then I come over here and I click and hold this circle and kind of move um, the circle about to um, the color that I need and just so I can customize it. Um, and that's pretty much the color that I'm looking for, for. So once I'm happy with it, then I'll come over here and hit add. And then once I hit add, the color will pop up here in um, the squares that I need. So once that color is selected, then I can start using that here. Um, and then once you change colors and click the square of the color, then you are able to use that. It's so easy. And it's actually super fun. I have so much fun making the charts. And it's probably one of my favorite things to do once um, um, I've done, I'm done like working up the wall hanging. Let's see. I think the next color I need is a taupey color. So I'm going to go ahead and select the same shade and then I'll just move this over here. And that is just about the color that I need. So again, I will come down here to add, add the color. And um, if you, once you're experimenting with colors and you want to kind of compare them, because you can add, you know, you can pretty much add as many colors as you want. Um, and if you're getting a little overwhelmed with how many colors you have over here in this column, you can always right click and come down here to remove and remove the color. And just so it's just not all cluttered. Um, 
and the next color that I need is like uh, purple so I'm going to choose the closest color over here to what I need and then I will move the circle to kind of get the color that I'm looking for and that's just about it so I will add it and then I need a green fig kind of color and if I can't find the exact color that I need here you can also move this white circle down here to kind of move it about because this fig color does have a little bit of a yellow undertone so I can always come over here and kind of um, move the circle about to kind of move it in between the colors and that is exactly the exact color that I need so I'm gonna come down here hit add and then the last color that I need is a gray so again I'll come over here one more time and this is the closest um, to the gray that I need so I will click that click add and now I have all the colors that I need to start creating my chart um, to create the chart I always just follow um, my written pattern because it's easier to do if I were to follow my chart I would have to count the squares again just like I would when I was um, writing the pattern down so instead of wasting time doing that um, I just print out a version of the written pattern and just highlight as I go uh, through the written pattern as I create the chart. So for example, the first six rows of this pattern that I'm making are going to be in this honey color. So all I would do is just fill in the first six rows of this honey color, but I'm not going to do it all at this moment just to save time. And then I will go through each of the rows of the pattern and then input the colors as I go so let's say I need four in honey and then four or three in honey four in taupe and then another three in this purple color you know all you to change the colors all you just have to do is come over here select the color that you need and just input it it's so easy to use and so much fun um, and it is such an easy way to create charts for, you know, the people who are purchasing your pattern. It is just such a good um, addition to have so people are able to um, track their progress as they go along. Um, and it's just going above and beyond for the people who are purchasing your patterns. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, and it, again, if you have any questions about Stitch Fiddle or anything else, please just leave them in the comments below. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was super helpful for you and has inspired you to design your own patterns and has taken any, you know, reservations or any doubts that you may have had um, when it comes to, you know, designing your own wall hanging or pillows or whatever you'd like to design um, while using this um, designing method. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments or send me a DM through any of my social media channels and I will go ahead and leave those uh, links to the channels or links to the, my social medias down below um, because they're in, uh, not only can you um, directly contact me, but if you would like to see any behind the scenes of future designs and pattern releases I have coming up, um, that is definitely the best place to find me. Um, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you are notified uh, when I post the next video, um, in my next video, I think I want to crochet with you guys. I think I want to go ahead and work up one of my patterns, maybe something from the blog. Um, I think it'd be so much fun to be able to like crochet a pattern together. So I think that is what I'm going to do next. Um, and please, again, leave any um, video recommendations you may have down in the comments as well. I'd love to hear your feedback and what you'd like to see next. Um, and with that being said, I will go ahead and leave you guys and I will see everyone in my next video. Bye!